everybody. It is Wednesday, July 22nd, and uh, time again for our daily reflection on the good and beautiful life. And as I was preparing for today, the uh, word that we kind of started this whole thing with, makarios, came to mind. Um, you remember that, if you were with us then? Um, the reality that in his kingdom right now, I am well off in spite of whatever circumstances I'm up against. Um, can't imagine a more relevant, incredible thought for the time we're living right now. That uh, those of us who know, who know Jesus and are surrounded by his presence through the Holy Spirit, who are living in the midst of an eternal kingdom, that everything we're experiencing right now is temporary. Um, those are good things. So I wanted to start off today with just, so how Makarios are you feeling? How well off um, in Jesus are you today? Um, that's the good and beautiful life we're talking about. <laughs> Let's pray together. Jesus, help us to engage that reality of your kingdom today. To lean into your invitation, incredible invitation into this relationship to know you. To be with the Father through the Holy Spirit to um, be caught up somehow while we're still here on earth in the reality of an eternal, powerful, awesome kingdom. It's amazing, Lord. Help us as we spend a few minutes to be there today, um, to seek first that kingdom. Hmm. Amen. So I was journaling through this chapter. Um, I wrote these three sentences. Worthy, worry and trust are mutually exclusive. Worry and seeking the kingdom are mutually exclusive. Worry and real relationship with Jesus are mutually exclusive. And I realized as I wrote those that it was like my brain had to put it down that black and white. Um, so that I could admit that this is a serious deal. This whole worry thing um, separates us from him, um, makes it impossible for us to truly experience his kingdom, to live the good and beautiful life, maybe more than any of the rest of the sins we've talked about. Um, this one cuts us off. It makes us focus just on ourselves and our ability to try and make things work out, which we know it doesn't work well at all. Um, I even found myself, um, as I was really working through this, trying to even argue a little bit with God. Like, you know, Lord, there are just some things that I have to figure out, that I have to think through, that I have to, man, plan out and look at all the consequences. And, and I almost could sense this smile on his face. Like, really, Dan? Yeah, I really think that, huh? Um, and then I realized that if God and his kingdom in my life are not more real, are, are not more tangible even than the problems that I'm facing, I'm always going to end up worrying. That's why Jesus said, seek first his kingdom. When I'm able to finally see that, that way to handle worry starts to make sense. That instead of trying to overcome worry by worrying more, which is what I think I end up doing without him, I just start seeking his kingdom, and all of a sudden his presence and power, the reality of his kingdom, just melt worry away. It's got to be the first thing on my priority list, my calendar, my schedule. Um, it's back to this Colossians 3 passage we're memorizing that we set our heart and mind on things above, not on the things of this earth, which cause us to worry. Um, and you just... <laughs> Uh, have to start you just have to do it it's just to make a choice that right now in this moment not tomorrow right now in this moment i'm going to seek his kingdom i'm going to turn my heart and mind toward him um, that the good and beautiful life that he offers us is real that it is a life and i can't get this that the good and beautiful life is a life that can be free of worry. Whoa. Uh, just take a minute to believe that, to allow the Holy Spirit to melt your heart into it. But to remember that to seek his kingdom and his righteousness is to seek the king. 
It's a relationship. It's not a self-help program, not a new philosophy, all kinds of books out there right now on how to not worry, right? How to get rid of anxiety. Um, as I was sharing some of this with my brother who doesn't walk with the Lord, he goes, I thought that's what beer was for. Uh, I, I mean, in the culture we're living in, we don't know how to deal with it. We do know how to deal with it. And we have to believe that Jesus' heart, being the most brilliant person that ever walked on the, on the earth, uh, that what he says is true. And we can trust it. We can go there. It's not something we conquer. Worry is not something that just one day, um, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit takes it away. It's going to be something that it's a moment-by-moment moment reality of seeking his kingdom so that worry doesn't have a place um, to be. Anyway, as we close, let's just um, get quiet. Invite the Holy Spirit to come. Um, we do. Um, Holy Spirit, we just invite you to make yourself especially tangible to us right now, wherever we are. Hmm. That the reality of your presence would draw our hearts and minds into your kingdom. I want you to just ask yourself, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, how convinced am I that doing the things that Jesus said will really work? How convinced am I that seeking him and seeking his kingdom can overcome whatever circumstances I'm dealing with here on earth? So you have to ask your question, where am I right now in relationship to the king? Because he is bigger than whatever circumstances are causing you worry right now. And realize without that relationship, you are bound to worry. There is no peace without Jesus. Lord, we are in a time, a season, when we are surrounded by opportunity to worry. Overwhelmed by it, Lord. So many things that seem just out of control and threatening, Lord. But this uh, day, right now, in this moment, we do set our hearts and our minds on you. We seek your kingdom. We seek you as our king. And Lord, we ask for that experience right now of your peace that passes understanding. Let us taste it, Lord. Let us touch it enough to draw us into one more. And to know that that's where we find it is just in being with you. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Stay in that place if you can. Spend a little more time just resting in it. Let the Holy Spirit just wash you in it if you can. Um, so just encourage you to take some extra time with it if you have it. Um, have a great middle of your week, and we'll see you tomorrow.